for the moment that you've all been waiting for. From just north of the border, he's the hombre with no nombre. Mi hermano from another mamo. He's got an ass that just won't quit. El numero uno. That's right. You're listening to one of the three hogsmen. Devin's not here. Duke said maybe next week. But it is uh, May 11th. It's a Tuesday. Adam. Yeah. It's May 11th. You know what that means? It's not May the 4th anymore? It's not May the 4th anymore. Uh, it's my uh, oldest brother, Dusty's birthday. Happy birthday. It's his 40th birthday, Dusty. I actually, uh, so I have two, uh, a friend named Alec. His birthday is May 10th. Mm-hmm. And then my older brother's birthday is May 11th. And yesterday I accidentally texted my older brother, happy birthday. <laughs> And he goes, it's tomorrow. It's Alex's birthday today. But uh, thank you. And I just wrote, well, I'll text you again tomorrow then. Yeah. And he you're... wrote, eh, I'll just read it again tomorrow then. Don't worry about it. You were ahead of the game. I was ahead of the game. But anyways, it's my oldest brother's uh, 40th birthday. Happy birthday, Dusty. What is going on, people? How was everybody's weekend? I was up at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood on Sunday. Yeah, I saw that. And... Um, had a hell of a match against Kevin Martinson. I'm sure you know Kevin. Yeah, I met him a couple of times when I was around Yuma, when he was Johnny Good Time. Back when he was Good Time. But uh, so got up there. God, I got up there so fast. Normally, like every time you go up to to uh, the L.A. area from San Diego, you're risking traffic, right? Yeah, you never know. Yeah, and um, man, freeways were clear. I could have slept in an extra 45 minutes. But uh, shot up there, and I, I was there in no time. Went in and uh, checked out the card, and I was like, oh, crap, I'm, I'm wrestling uh, Martinson. Awesome, man. I've, I've never wrestled Martinson. And, uh, you know, I've always heard how good he was. And, you know, you, you see it from, from uh, you know, the spectator's point of view. Yeah. When, uh, when you watch another wrestler, like, oh, yeah, he's, he's pretty good. But as a wrestler, you don't know until you really get in there yeah. how good is this guy. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, Martinson's awesome, dude. I, I, I've never really had too much interaction with him um, prior to uh, us wrestling. Yeah. You know, it's always just been like, hey, how you doing, man? What's up? You know, handshaking, saying hello and, and later and all that kind of stuff. Um, I always knew he was like a, a really nice guy. Yeah. But uh, at championship, uh, that's the first time I've, I've actually like really had a conversation with him and, and stuff like that. And man, he, he, he's way cool. Yeah, he's very quiet. He's a very quiet guy. He That's is. That's why you, you only really get to know him if you probably have a match with him or are friends with him. Otherwise, he kind of keeps to himself. Yeah, yeah. I, I do respect the fact that he, like, uh, stays away from social media, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And But anyways, yeah, we went in there and we had a, a, really, a really good match, man. Like, you know, I always hate every match yeah. that I do. And only like a few times have I been like, okay, yeah, that was good. Like that was really good. Um, but my my match with Martinson, that's one of those times where I'm like, all right, that that was good. Yeah. And, and then at least until I, from what I, I remember, and like during the match, I was like, okay, this is going well. Yeah. And afterwards, everybody seemed to like it. Martinson was happy with it. I was happy with it. And uh, so yeah. It's. It, I feel like it was a pretty good match. Of course, when it airs on Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, and however long, I don't know when it's going to air. I'll, I, who knows? I might hate it. You know, yeah. I. It's when you watch your match back and you and you start to see little things that nobody else. Yeah. Probably notices except for yourself, but it bugs the shit out of you. Yeah. That's what I do. But um, I enjoyed it, man. I really enjoyed it. That's good. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, Here's a little story. I won't tell you about, you know, you know, I won't spoil the match for anybody, but uh, I got hardwayed during the match, oh, wow. match accidentally. Shit happens. And uh, so I had another match, uh, a second match, um, later in the day against Richie Slade. And I was like, oh, sweet. I, I want to work Richie. Um, I like Richie. He's a good guy. Great punch, by the way. Great punch. And that is like the highest compliment I think a wrestler can get yeah. by saying, hey, man, you got a really good punch. So um, I was supposed to wrestle him uh, later, but uh, they were like, yeah, you're bleeding. Um, we uh, we can't have you in the ring. 
And I was like, yeah, I completely understand that, you know, because they were able to uh, clean me up. Thank you very much, Darwin Finch, for uh, for taking care of my cut. And they were like, yeah, you might need a stitch, you know, whatever. And so I was like, yeah, if I if I get back in the ring and my and my you know heart rate starts pumping again, like this thing's gonna start bleeding pretty badly, and it, you know it'll just be a mess. Yeah. So they were like, yeah, you're you're good for the day, and I was like, sweet man. So I actually got to get home early. Uh, I got home about eight eight o'clock at night, and, and rather than like eleven thirty. Yeah. And uh, I got to hang out with the with the wife and do a little bit of the uh, the Mother's Day stuff. And uh, yeah, so got hard weighed. Blessing in disguise. Yeah. Got to go home early. But, uh, yeah, it's nothing bad. I didn't have to get stitches or anything like that. I was able to kind of close it up. And, you know, the second that I could start scabbing, you're like, oh, I'm good. It yeah. was in my hairline. Shit happens, dude. Yeah. And it just adds to the match. Just adds to the match. Here's a, a advice, kids. If you get hard weight during a match, don't worry. Use it. Yeah. Use it. Don't waste it. Let it be seen. Get some pictures. You know, get in front of the camera. Let it be seen. Uh, you know, it might cause you a little bit of problems later. Like you might have to go get stitches yeah. or staples or something like that. But, uh, Hey man, use it, use it for everything you can. It's not ballet. Fun fact, getting staples to the head doesn't hurt. It doesn't. I've, I've done it. it. You've done it. Yeah. It happened to me too. No, uh, no, uh, uh, they didn't numb you up at all. They did numb me up. Oh yeah. no. Just take it straight to the dome, dude. Yeah. No, dude. I, but I, I barely could feel it anyway. So. Yeah, I uh, I got staples, and they were like, "You want us to numb you up?" I'm like, "Just give me it, dude." Pop, 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 three to the head, man. And I was like, "That that was fine." Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather get staples than stitches. I think I would too. Stitches are a whole ordeal. Staples, they just throw they throw however many they need to get in your head, and you're out. Yeah. And then um, you can do a lot more. Like I remember, like I could shower and stuff like that with with the staples in. Yeah, because with stitches, there's always the fear that it could tear or something. Yeah. So, yeah. Staple, I, I liked having staples. I've never had stitches, but I've had staples. So Yeah. So, anyways, um, check that out. My match with Martinson. I, I hope it, 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 you know, comes off well. Yeah. From what I remember and what everybody said, it was really good. So, awesome, man. Yeah, good feedback. That's all that matters, right? That's all that matters. And happy Mother's Day out there to everybody. I know it was Sunday, and you're hearing this on a Wednesday, but whatever, dude. Yeah. We're recording on a Tuesday. Every day is Mother's Day. Every day is Mother's Day. Adam, what's going on, man? What's happening? How was your weekend? Do you do anything fun? How's the hand? I see you got a little uh, brace on it. Yeah, so I went to urgent care on Friday and did x-rays on Monday, and they said they didn't see a break. Nice. So, But they also said that it's been three weeks since I, it happened, so it still could be a bone that they just can't see or it already started to heal. Maybe you're like Wolverine; it already healed up. So I, I, they're, I'm supposed to hear from radiologist some point in the next couple of days and find out if it's broken or not, for for sure. But it doesn't feel broken. I don't know if by this point, like, I would feel better if it were broken. I think mm-hmm. I'd still be uncomfortable. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, I actually was at a wrestling show on Saturday. Oh, that's right. You went up to West Coast Emmett. Wrestling Company. The West Coast Wrestling Company. Um. I cut a promo against Brandon Gatson. I'm sure it was a hell of a promo. It was. It was a very good promo. Um, Did you remember your uh, your your seminar teachings from Jimmy Jacobs that one time out in Arizona? I try to forget that seminar because I literally cut the worst promo in my life at that seminar. So what? So That's, did I. No, yours was better than, way better than mine. No, it wasn't. It was dog shit. Keep going. What, yeah. do, what do you got? Uh, no, so I cut a promo against Brandon Gatson. Uh, the show's good. Um, the venue's cool. It's kind of like centrally located near a lot of like shopping centers and stuff so crowd was big uh show was good uh i have a few minor complaints but they're nothing to do with anything important it's Mm. just kind of certain people at the show it was cool i saw uh socal crazy there i haven't seen in a long time he (laughs) so i we got there and i saw him and i was wearing a mask and i hugged him yeah went for the hug so at the end of the night Again, I have the mask down at this point. He hugs me again. He's like, Adam, I didn't even recognize you. <laughs> I looked at him and was like, did you just think you were hugging a complete stranger earlier? And he was like, yeah. That's exactly, yeah. I was like, what, a, have no problem like, doing what a good guy. Like, just He just hugs random strangers that just walk up to him and hug him. Like, Nestor's one of the nicest guys, and yes, that would be his move. Like, yeah. I don't know who this is, but I'll give him a hug. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the, he's, just, he's just an awesome guy, man. I saw Andy Jasik, who was one of my original trainers, anchors away one so, of my trainers good, too. good guy what was he doing there 
he helps a little bit with like stuff around the show like he'll help like at one point the ropes needed to be tightened so he went and did that he would go and let the guys know it's their time to come up whatnot so i think he's just kind of like roves around the show he helps out because he's Stop friends with uh ginsburg so um yeah and there's a bunch of other people i haven't seen in like 10 years people that were on those shows back in like 2010 when i was doing those shows so it was fun there was someone who looked a lot like pd but i don't think it was pd pd we talking about rebel Storm? yeah so I saw him, but he didn't have like multicolored hair, mm-hmm. but he looked a lot like Petey. I don't think it was Petey though. All right. He didn't acknowledge me when I like waved to him. So I don't, if it was Petey, then you're a dick. Like you should, <laughs> should have waved back at me. <laughs> you just got blackballed, brother. <laughs> but no, I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, it was fun. Cool, man. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, speaking of shows, let's go over. Uh, I got the card for Vegas. Okay. This is cool, man. I uh, so uh, I got you know the itinerary and all that kind of stuff for that day. This is for the uh, Canna Pro Show in Las Vegas, and this is uh, on May twenty second and twenty third. It's for the Bud Tenders Award at the Mandalay Bay uh, Resort and Casino. This is a two day thing. It's a Saturday Sunday event, uh, and here is the card. Okay, uh, for both days. And I actually there might be a little bit of a a problem on this card, but who cares? I don't care. Um, all right, first match. This starts. It looks like it's starting at uh, at noon on Saturday, and uh, the first match is going to be Jackson Calhoun with uh, Sweet Robin Shaw versus James Brady and Savannah Stone versus Otto Van Clutch versus Guy Cool. That's there's a lot going on right there. Yeah, there's a lot going right. on right there. You said all that, and I was still trying to figure out what's happening. This is a pound on a pull match, so it's okay. It's Jackson versus oh, okay. It's Jackson Calhoun versus James Brady versus Otto Von Clutch versus Guy Cool. It's a four way. Okay, all right, that's cool. All right, and then the next match is going to be uh, Delilah Doom versus Dark Sheik. And next match is going to be uh, this is a level up four way, so this is going to be uh, DTF versus uh, Sexy Fab versus Leo Canedo versus uh, Rebel Storm. So that is uh, four level up students all wrestling a, in a four way. Okay. Good luck, kids. And no, now this one's I'm not sure about. I think they might have messed up, but I'm not sure. I'll take this match too. But it's going to be I'm, – I'm the 1 o'clock uh, match, okay. by the way. And it's going to be myself. Uh, here it says McCall, which means Calder McCall. Okay. Which I'm, I'm down to wrestle Calder too. But I'm not sure. I think this might be a a, 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 a mistake because I'm supposed to be re- wrestling Rami Marcel. But I could be wrestling him on the Sunday show too, but I don't see that on here. Whatever. I'll wrestle Remy. I'll yeah. wrestle Calder. Don't, uh, don't gauntlet, bother me none. Don't bother me none. Maybe they'll throw you in the pound for a pole match. Nah, I'm okay on that. I'm <laughs> all right on that. And then you're going to have another match. This is going to be uh, Michael Hopkins versus uh, J2, Juan Matatoli. Uh, the next match, this is going to be, uh, let's see. Okay. Hmm. It looks like the fly, which I believe is Eli Everfly. Yeah. And the dope dealer, which I'm not—I don't know who that is. Versus Gates and Boogie, which I'm guessing that's Slice Boogie. I'm, oh, that might be Cam- is it Cameron Gates? I think he's a—he's uh, Santino's guy. Yeah. I'm not exactly. That's just what it says. I don't know what it is. Anyways, here's a big uh, listen. Hunter making a name for himself. Did you see the little tweet? Oh, I did. So if it uh, some some kid went and. Uh, it must have been at the wrestling guy store. That's what it looked like yeah. up in LA. Um, Heath Slater, the man formerly known as Heath Slater. I don't know what he's wrestling, but as his name. Last I, I heard, it was Heath Miller. Heath Miller. Yeah. Uh, he showed this person showed uh, the man formerly known as Heath Slater a picture of uh, the Lucha Redneck mm-hmm. Hunter Freeman with the Ground Zero belt, and uh, the man formerly known as Heath Slater cut a little promo on him, saying he wants to. Uh, he wants to, his chance at the Ground Zero belt. Who knows? That might that might that might happen. Might happen, man. That'd be awesome. But anyways, here is the uh, final match. Nope, I'm sorry, I lied. Um, this is the uh, 145 match. It's going to be Hunter Freeman versus 
Gangrel. I guarantee Hunter's going to have a great time uh, with that match because Russ and David is one of the coolest things, man. I'm telling you. One Especially of the best. Especially he's going to have the big advantage. He's wrestling a vampire during the day. Exactly. Th- th- that's true. That's true. And by the way, uh, congratulations to Gangrel. He got engaged. I saw that too. Um, so congratulations, David. All right. This is – okay, so that was like uh, the early show mm-hmm. on Saturday. And this is the late show. So – Starting at 3 o'clock, it's going to be uh, the Sin City Scumbags versus Affirmative Action. I'm not sure who the, those t- two teams consist of. But, all right, cool. Good luck, guys. Next match will be Robin Shaw versus Wildman Robin, uh, Rob McKnight. I think that's Rob Shit, the greatest pro wrestling name in Maybe. the business. I, I assume that's not a name he's going to be able to travel with very often. Rob <laughs> shit. I, don't I, th- told, I told this a long time ago to Rob. I go, hey, listen, man, you got to spell your name so it's not S-H-I-T. It's got to yeah. be like... Like Shit's S- Creek. It's got to be like S-H-I-T-E yeah. or something like that. And when the announcer goes to read your name, he should have like a confused look on his his face. Like, am I saying this right? And Rob should be like pointing at it being like, yeah, that, yeah that's right. That's right. Anyways, that, that I thought it was hilarious. Uh, all right, uh, and then the next match is going to be Rami Marcel versus uh, Jordan Cruz. And next match is going to be uh, Doomfly. That is the team of Eli Everfly and Delilah Doom. And Matt Vandergriff versus uh, the Wolf Zaddies, who is uh, big, uh, Bad Dude Tito. And I believe this is Rico Dynamite. And then they're also going to be accompanied by Rays. So okay. that's, a six, uh, that's a six man tag, six, six man woman and tag. Six person tag. Six person tag. There you go. Good job. Thank you. Next match: Santana Jackson versus Remy Morgan. If any, I, I believe Santana Jackson's the guy who uh, he's a Michael Jackson impersonator. Oh, so that guy. And then he I'm, incorporates he's it. A, he is Vegas based, right? So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, he does that moonwalk DDT. It's pretty fucking slick. Yeah. Um. Cool. And next match, it's going to be La Rebellion. I believe that is uh, Mecha Wolf. And Bestia 666 versus The Doorman. Not sure who that is. I do I do like the name, though. And final match for that day is going to be Damien 666 versus Gangrel. Looks like David's doing double duty on Saturday. Studski. Stud. All right. All right. What else we got going on here? There's a lot of stuff going on with this show. It's crazy. This is a Sunday show. Let's check this out. Starts at 1 o'clock also. And it is going to be, uh, I believe it's Ro- Rob McKnight. I believe that's Rob shit. Uh, versus Shaggy, who I believe is a uh, Vegas guy. Versus Otto Von Clutch. And then I believe this is Remy Morgan. That he's. It just says Remy. It could either be Remy yeah. Marcel or Remy Morgan. I believe it's Remy Morgan. But I could be wrong. It's one of the Remy's. All right, next match. This is going to be a flag match. Not sure what that means, but it says it's a flag match. And that's going to be Ruby Rays versus Savannah Stone. And let's see, match three is going to be... uh, Okay, I'm not sure who this is. The Enterprise versus Sexy Things. Sexy Things, I believe, is uh, Sexy Fab and Leo Canetto. I'm not sure. I think the Enterprise might be Shaw and Calhoun. It might be. Yeah, 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 yeah. It definitely has to do something with Shaw because I remember him talking about it. Don't hold me to that, though. All right, next match. My good buddy, Ricky Mandel, Sexy Beach, along with his uh, little girlfriend, Sarah the Rebel, versus Hunter Freeman. I wanted to wrestle Ricky. I'm surprised Ricky's only on one day. I know he lives out there. Yeah, maybe he's got shit to do. I don't know. Maybe I'll tell Hunter I'm going to take that match from him. (laughs) Because I'm there Sunday, but I don't see myself on this Sunday card. Come, All on, right. come on, Hunter. You're getting shout-outs from former WWE guys. Give Mike the spot. Yeah. All right. Next match, it's going to be Jordan Cruz versus Calder McCall. And then there, it looks like there's a rumble going on. Oh, there you go. That's what you're in. Uh, you're the king of the rumble, Mike. Get the – what the hell? This is interesting. So this – I mean, I don't know if I'm supposed to – I'm not going to say who's in this, uh, who's in this rumble because I'm not sure if, like, it's supposed – I don't know. Oh, get the fuck out of here. All right, I'm not going to say anything. There's a rumble. 
There's a rumble. There's a rumble. Now, if this is a battle royale, I'm going to be upset. If it's a rumble, I'm cool with it. Yeah. All right, here we go. Because you made your debut in a rumble. I do, I, rumbles are fun. Battle royales suck. Rumbles are fun. Because the rumbles, you get an entrance. You get an entrance. You get a little bit of time to shine up. You got. It's just, it's funner. Okay? Anybody out there, you'll hate battle royales. Rumbles are okay. All right, and then there's going to be a match. Uh, this is interesting. It says Brian Cage is going to be there, and but I'm not sure who he's wrestling. Maybe right. it's you. We'll keep moving on. All right, let's do it. Um, next match, it's going to be uh, Michael Hops versus Slice Boogie. That will be a good match. And then I think that's about it. I think that's about it. But that's a lot of, that's a lot of talent on those cards, man. That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm flying in very early on Saturday, and I'm flying out very late on Sunday. I basically have the first flight to Vegas on Saturday morning and the last flight out of Vegas Sunday night. But it's a quick flight, right? That's like an hour? Oh, it's like an hour. Yeah, it's no problem. Um, it's just more of the time after the show. I'm going to be trying to kill between the show and my flight out. Yeah. Well, but, Vegas might be more open now. Maybe you can do some gambling. I hope so, man. Because I, And I don't, I don't even like gambling. Um the last time we went out there, I was just like, it was just too much. Yeah. Too much. Uh, you know, you have to wear like your mask by the pool and they like are on top of that stuff too. Plus it was like a hundred and a hundred plus degrees out. Yeah. Last thing you want is a mask on your, I don't know. I get it though. I get it. Anyways, that's my uh, weekend next weekend. Okay. That's going to be next weekend, the 22nd, 23rd. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good time bunch of people out there hopefully the boys are all gonna be hanging out having fun I'm looking forward to it that's a good uh, experience for a lot of those guys going out of state but still working kind of for the same people that they work with out here yeah it's kind of you know different crowd different kind of energy yeah i uh i'm looking forward to it man i'm looking but, forward to plus it. plus if it's like a whole convention type thing you know they're gonna have good crowds on those shows yeah and i guess you said it this this bud tenders award is kind of a big thing yeah, I mean, it's at the Mandalay Bay. Like, that's a pretty big place to be holding something. So, you know, it's going to draw attention regardless. People don't, if people don't know about it, they'll see a bunch, they'll stumble onto it, you know, if they're just in the Mandalay Bay gambling or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I, 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 there's supposed to be like celebrities there. Like, yeah, I would assume so. And I'm talent. Yeah. So I get to go hang out backstage with yeah. all the celebrities, I'm guessing. Shake hands, take pics. I'm joking. I probably won't do that, but. <laughs> If I see a certain person, I will. I'm not going to lie to you. If Mike Tyson shows up, I'm going to mark out like crazy. That's Mike Tyson. You never know, man. That's Mike Tyson. I'll be like, Mike, you want to recreate Stone Cold in the ring with me? You know, like, could you imagine me coming out trying to act badass towards Mike Tyson? (laughs) That reminds me of the time where Devin tried to get Goldberg to come spear him at a show in Pendleton. I Uh, never told you that story. Oh, I I, I watched the. It's on YouTube. Yeah. The match. It's, It's. hilarious hilarious it's Devin just trying to be a big big man yeah and like hits like an awkward jackknife and it the, the camera just pan, pans over to Goldberg who just has a who's just laughing he's just laughing he's yeah. just laughing it's hilarious it's so funny hilarious anyways what else is going on man Adam what's going on in this wrestling world is there any controversies going on there's no, always controversy I, going on in the rest of the world. I don't think there's anything huge this week, but I honestly haven't been paying much attention anyway. Uh, yeah, no, it's been pretty quiet on the controversy front, I think. It's so funny. Sometimes like, I'll be scrolling through uh, like Twitter, and I'll see people like making like comments towards something. And I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about? Yeah. Because like, apparently I'm not following somebody or or whatnot. Yeah. And I, I, I just am I'm missing what they're talking about. The- it only, bothers me. Only thing I saw this week was people were upset that they left out the Triple H Booker T stuff in the Booker T documentary. Because they had a match at WrestleMania 19, and Triple H cut a pretty infamous promo where he said, People like you aren't world champion. You're just here to make me laugh. Yeah. And then that turned into a whole. Even back then, it was like very much like, I probably shouldn't have said that. Yeah. I but they that. left it out of the documentary and like. People were like making a big deal about that. I'm like, yeah. Is it really that big of a, like? Is that really that big of a part of history of, of Booker T's history though? Uh, I mean, like, that's like not, not even a, not necessarily. But there's a lot of people that think that that match should have gone differently, and like well, people are. It, that's one of the exam. That's one of like the one example people use when they talk about Triple H abuses his power. I'm like, Booker T probably should have won that match, but. 
but you're not. It is what it is. You're not. You're not, you're not the promotion. You're not the yeah. booker. It's like the ending of Game of Thrones, the final season. Yeah. Was it the greatest? No. no. Would I have liked another ending? Yes. But that's what they gave us, man. Okay, that's what they gave us. Was it the greatest ending? N- fuck no. But you know, and they, you know, like I don't know if you ever watched Dexter, but that ending was nah. terrible. But they're bringing it back, so they're gonna fix it. Hopefully. Dude, you know what? I was watching TV with my wife uh, the other day, and we were talking about. How exciting it used to be on Sunday nights when you knew the na- the new Game of Thrones was coming yeah. on, and then it comes on, and then it's got the opening with the music and all like that. Ah, uh, it gave you such a rush, man! Like hell yeah, yeah. what's going on? To- what's going on tonight? Who's getting killed off? That was just the best show ever, man. I miss those nights. Yeah, I don't know if there's ever going to be shows like that again. I I have to like I'm, the Sopranos was like that I think but I didn't watch it because I was too young but yeah like, the Sopranos I know Sopranos were a big deal I know when Breaking Bad was on that was a big deal every Sunday Game of Thrones obviously but uh, I guess maybe the Marvel shows recently have become kind of like you're pumped up for the new episode but like it's not it's not the same it's not the same man it's not the same and I agree like those Marvel stuff all like they're good stuff but nothing was like when Game yeah. of Thrones Game of Thrones had you hooked. Yes. From the beginning to the end, hooked, and then you had to wait for the, or then you had to watch like, remember they do like the clips of next week's episode. Yeah. You had after the credits, you had to watch that too, because you just you needed it was it was like heroin, man. Like it was addicting yeah. that show, and then it kind of just uh, sputtered yeah, out. The, the last season, I don't know like what happened there, but just. It's uh, when they immediately had to pivot away from the books. I think is when it started to go downhill. Yeah, because the show pretty much followed the books, I guess, to a T, from what I heard. Yeah, for like three seasons or something. No, for all of them, but the last one. Oh, really? Yeah, the last thought, season is the old... up the, I thought they passed up the books a few seasons. Well, in yeah. So the uh, spoilers, whatever. But Who cares? Uh, um, the books, the last book ends with the Jon Snow thing where he gets killed. So everything kind of after that oh, okay. is pretty much not from the, the not from the books. But there is some stuff that's still in the books that happens after. It's really confusing. But yeah, the last book, I guess, ends with Jon Snow being killed. Okay. So no one really knew what was going to happen when he got killed by all the people. I am excited, though. They're doing like the prequel to yeah, they're it. doing a bunch of stuff. So I'm happy about that. Yeah. Hopefully it can live up to uh, what the original Game of Thrones was. I'm sure they'll try, but it's going to be really hard. That's that's yep. that's the problem with doing spinoffs of shows like that. It's yep. like you're really it better be great because if it's not, people are just going to hate it. Yep, yeah, so. I agree, man. I agree. Cool, man. What else we got going on? Movies are coming back. Movies, actually, you know what I watched the other day on HBO Max? It's been out for a little while, but uh, it finally was on HBO Max. Uh, is Tenet? Yeah. Did you watch that? I loved it. I like it. You know what my my problem is with it is the score the music is too loud and the dialogue is sometimes too low you can't hear it over the music yeah and i, I watched the thing on because I, I had to watch a youtube clip to kind of like help break down yeah like make sense of everything yeah. and they said that was one of the problems because they they were editing this during you know the shutdown yeah so the, ed, the you know the 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 synchronizing the music and all that kind of they, somebody like it wasn't the greatest because they had to do it off of like yeah. a laptop or some shit like that well that was the big problem with that movie is he refused Christopher Nolan refused to have it released on like a streaming service he's like it has to be in theaters but this was during like times when the sh- theaters were open and closed open and yeah. closed like I saw it when it was in theaters because it was during a period when theaters were open last year but even so it was just like well you probably couldn't have made much money because not a lot of people were going to the movies at that point no you ain't gonna make no money. Yeah. So I'm, I I like the movie. It is it is very confusing. It is. If you don't pay, if like even if you watch it, one, like you have to watch it multiple times. Like I watched it the second time and I got it a little better the second time. Yeah. But it's still very like what, huh? Like what's going on? Yeah. It's 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 definitely a Christopher Nolan movie. Yeah. Because you have to pay attention because there's a lot to break down. Uh, Robert Pattinson, fantastic awesome. job. Yeah. Fantastic job. Um. It's movies like this that really help somebody break out of yeah, uh, being like pigeonholed. Yeah, because those Twilight movies sucked. Yeah, let, let, let's be honest here, guys. My wife took me to see one of those, and I hated it. I hated it. Uh, I think I had. I, I think I, I think I, I think I actually had to see two of them in the theaters because my wife wanted to go see them. And since I'm always the one picking the movies, like 
Star Wars, Marvel, any Christopher Nolan movie, and like anything like that, you gotta th- you gotta let her pick every once in a while. Yeah. And she uh, she picked Twilight movies, and I hated them. And uh, you know, so to me, that Robert Pattinson dude has that stink on him yeah. from the Twilight movies. But after watching this, I was like, yo, this guy's a yeah. good actor, man. He's badass. I think that, and then once if this Batman movie is good, I think that'll finally get him out of that like view of him being the vampire from twilight yeah and it sounds like that batman is having problems uh i heard uh, like anymore. multiple problems like uh, with that there, there was some, there were some rumors last year that he was being kind of a pain in the ass uh he got COVID at one point so they had to shut down production they've had to shut down production a couple of times just because of what's been going on the last year and they're filming in england which is way more strict yeah with their th- with their stuff like that's where tom cruise had his like freak out well, on the yeah. Mission Impossible set because yeah. like they can literally just shut these movies down if they don't follow everything to a T. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I like the movie a lot. Uh, the the main character is Denzel Washington's son, so I'm all yeah. on board for that. So he's I like him, and hopefully he does more stuff. Wait, we're talking about Tenet, right? Tenet, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. So yeah, I mean, I think you trans you transferred from the Batman to that real quick. Yeah. No, I was just. You know. So Denzel Washington kid is 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 the star of Tenet. Yeah, I don't. What's his What's his John name? John David Washington. John David Washington. Yeah, he does a great job. Yeah, does a really good job. He was on Ballers. You can tot. I never watched that show. You can totally see he's he's Denzel's son yeah. too. He has like certain mannerisms and facial like just where you're like, oh, this is totally Denzel's kid. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I dug it. But I, I I'm definitely have to watch it again, just to kind of like wrap everything up yeah there's a few things where like they they broke it down in like the explanation videos on youtube where i'm like i didn't get that at all yeah and i kind of want to spoil it because it's been out long enough, as well but yeah. i also don't want to yeah, who cares spoiler alert for tenet and uh, no so when they say that robert pattinson's character was the kid that's of the, the theory yeah. i didn't pick that up at all yeah because because he's very protective of, of the woman you see he's like very like or he tries to avoid her at all costs. Like he kind of looks at her, but doesn't. Oh. But yeah. There's like, there's like kind of like a theory, like she might recognize him. Oh. But I don't know. It's, it, these are all just fan theories that people create. Yeah. Cause I didn't pick that up yeah. at all in the movie, but now that you pick that or say that kind of stuff, maybe I'll notice the, yeah. the little mannerisms he does. And, and maybe it'd be like, Oh yeah. Okay. I get it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I'm a fan of Robert Pattinson now. Can't wait. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he lives it up in 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 the Batman movie because that movie looks so sweet. Yes, so sweet. How cool was that trailer for the Batman? It was awesome. And adding on Nirvana. Yes. And putting it more of that slow. It, it's like the unplugged version. Yeah. God damn, that was good, man. It's a very different vibe to Batman movies, which is I think kind of what we needed. Yeah. The last couple of Batman movies have had kind of the same sort of like one of them was like it's this Christopher Nolan movie but it's Batman yeah and the next one was like well this is kind of like like the Zack Snyder stuff is kind of the comic book version of Batman like the darker version of it and this one just kind of seems like a I don't know maybe a grunge version of it yeah kind of like was it like a a noir yeah noir noir Noir. yeah Uh, that that's what it kind I feel like it gives off that kind of vibe yeah Um, speaking of uh, Nirvana unplugged. You know when people ever ask you like, "Hey, what band would you want to see in concert?" Like that you can't see anymore. Yeah. Like, because there's a certain concert or something like that. That's always my answer. Nirvana. Like they're like, "Hey, pick a concert, like one concert or one band that you would see like at any time, any any pl-. like people would be like, oh, Woodstock or some shit like that." I'll tell you the truth, man. I'd want to go see that unplugged performance by Nirvana. Yeah. Could you? I mean, there was probably only what a hundred plus people in yeah. in the audience for that. Could you imagine? Saying like I was one of those people in the audience yeah, watching that cool. performance, one of the greatest performances of all time. I don't know if I'd want to go to like a a normal Nirvana concert back in the day. I feel like that'd be I a little would. too wild for me. Fuck no, I would. I'd be right up in that, yeah. dude. Hell yeah, I'd be up in that. Uh, by the way, I heard like the FBI released some documents about Cobain's death that have never been released before. Because you know, like there's that whole idea yeah. that he didn't commit suicide, that maybe he got murdered. And uh, but I, was, I thought that was pretty interesting. I mean, it's like God, it's been like it's almost like thirty years, right? Something like that. Like, and you're just now coming out with this stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. I, I, that's always so weird to me when stuff like that comes out like thirty years later. Yeah. Like, did you? Did you uh, it's kind of off top. Did you ever see the movie Argo? 
Yes. So it's like that was like a thing that they like kept under wraps for like twenty years. Yeah. Like how did you, how did you keep, like how did no one know about that? Like, yeah. It's so crazy. But yeah. Same kind of stuff. Like who who knows who knows what else we don't know right now that we will know in twenty years. Yeah. Do you know what's crazy is? So I I was right there. I was like in fourth grade when uh Nirvana came out with uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit. It might have been like third or fourth grade. And you. I, I've said this for a long time. Nirvana to me is the most important band to come out in the past thirty years than more than anybody other band. Yeah. Any other band. There's so many bands that wouldn't have been successful if it wasn't for them. Nirvana changed the music industry, right? Prior to them, it was all about uh, it was hair metal, right? Yeah. A lot of hair metal, a lot of uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, all that kind of stuff. And then you know, grunge started peeking its head out from the Pacific Northwest yeah, and was like, Hey, and then Nirvana just kicked the fucking door open with smells like teen spirit and literally changed everybody changed, changed society. You started seeing people wear flannels. People were more depressed, <laughs> you know, just cause like they're supposed to be. Yeah. It was, you can't, unless you were alive back then, you can't describe the, the influence that Nirvana yeah. had on society and, and culture. Is there, is there any music today that influences culture like music back in the day did? Like, I don't think so. Like, I don't, uh, I don't, I, you know, it's weird. I guess you can say like, like Britney Spears and like that, the late nineties yeah. also had a huge influence. I mean, you look at the late nineties. Remember TRL? Yes. You had everything from literally Britney Spears in sync Backstreet Boys to Wu Tang Clan uh, to Bad Boy. Um, you had no, Cash Money Millionaires and then, you know, all the rap groups. Yeah. And then you had Corn, Marilyn Manson, Limp Biscuit. They all showed up on that show and it was all kind of like these are the top, what was it, top 10 or something like that? Yeah. And it's like, wow, look at the goddamn diversity in, in this music. It's It was nuts, dude. People would just stand outside to hopefully see the artists in the window. Yeah. Like that's how big of a deal it was. I'm like, people would just camp out in Times Square, just hanging out just to see maybe Eminem wave at them through the window. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know if there was like, a, if there's a certain band, but man, the late nineties, there was a lot yeah. of like just diversity going on in the music. Yeah. I at think, least that's what I think. I think that's kind of when it pivoted off of the Nirvana stuff though. I think it was very much that for a while. And then all these boy bands came along Yeah, and then rap kind of ch- became better. And then that was kind of like the model for the late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. And I, I, I honestly don't have my, I don't know what it is today. I don't know what the music is today. That's popular, but no, you're not supposed to know you're, we're, we're way too old. Yeah. Dude caring about that but yeah it's i if i couldn't say i couldn't tell you one direct person group that affected the culture as much as nirvana did no yeah you're right i mean people would probably say like kanye west maybe i I would probably say because this was I, i was this age i would say eminem impacted a lot of people like just the the mentality of a lot of people in the late like especially me as a young kid I kind of like fluctuated towards that like attitude that he had yeah like it I, was kind of like and then you know Marilyn Manson was kind of the same way but yeah I I you know what's interesting too is Eminem obviously wasn't the first white rapper no but he definitely opened up the door yeah for 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 white rappers yeah because. Yeah, well, here's the funny thing. Uh, Beastie Boys have been around since like the beginning of yeah. rap. Three Jewish kids, I think they were from Brooklyn, right? Yeah. And little people, people don't know this. They were a punk band. Yeah. If you listen to Sabotage, Sabotage is a punk song, and um, and then they discovered that they could rap yeah. or do some. I don't know. The craziest thing I haven't seen this since the Beastie Boys, and the Beastie Boys did this so well. The Beastie Boys never just had their own verse. You notice that? Like, the Beastie yeah. Boys were always cutting in and out of each other's yeah. verses. Could you imagine doing that on stage? 
it's nuts. Yeah, it'd be nuts. It's nuts. You have to know, like, oh, my line's coming up right here. Yeah. My line's coming up right here, rather than just like, okay, I got the rest of this verse off until the uh, the chorus comes up, and then I come back, come in. Yeah. You're, they're constantly going back and forth uh, on verses. It's crazy. But no, I don't. I don't know if this because I was obviously pretty young back then, and there was no internet back then, and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But nobody said like, oh, look at these three, you know, white Jewish boys rapping. Yeah. It was just they were that good. Yeah. And the Def Jam artists around them were like, yeah, man, these guys, they're fire. Like, they, they know what they're doing, man. And then you had Vanilla Ice out. And by the way, I was a huge Vanilla Ice fan. Yeah. And But he was kind of made, you know, obviously that was like a real quick run, right? Like he, that candle burned and really the, and quickly. I think, he, I think he did something that Eminem never did is he made that song for the Ninja Turtles movie. By the way, six songs. It's a great fucking song. Ninja but rap. At that point, it's like, all right, so this guy's not really trying to rap. He's trying to become famous. Yeah, and also... Whereas I never got that with Eminem. Like, what Eminem did was he, he he made fun of himself. Yeah. And that's what everybody was like, okay, we'll accept this guy. Yeah. Because he's, he, he's, he's, he's not trying to, to act like he... Uh, he's not trying to rap about, like, bitches, hoes, yeah. money, gang banging, uh, drug dealing... All that kind of stuff. He's talking about like, yeah, man, I'm white. Yeah, this is how I grew up. He was embracing the fact he was white trash. Exactly. So, um, it was it was pretty. Uh, and after that, man, you saw a lot of white rappers come out. Obviously, a lot of them sucked. Yeah, sucked ass. But then there was ones, man, like Bubba Sparks, mm -hmm. solid. Uh, Paul Wall, mm -hmm. awesome. And then you know, you know, from there, you, uh, who's that? The Mac Miller kid, Mac Miller, Machine yeah, Gun no. Kelly. Yeah, I don't really. Yeah, um, cool. Um, He's not really rap anymore either. He's kind of changed his style of music too. Yeah, but it's just like, man, Eminem. Like, now it's not a big deal at all if you're a white rapper. It's like, no. hey, man, the guy can rap. That's it. And I can see that too because, you know, what's interesting is when you saw those, the late '90s, you saw a lot more of the 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 meshing mm -hmm. of rap and rock. Yeah, because you got to think a lot of these, of these people grew up with both mu you know both styles of music. I, me growing up, I loved rap and I loved metal, and you know a lot of the stuff in between. So if let's say if I went into the music industry, I would bring those influences with me, right? Yeah. So you saw a lot of that with like Limp Biscuit, Corn, um, Lincoln Park, Lincoln Park. They made a whole album with Jay Z. Dude, I remember listening to Lincoln Park for the first time. What is it? The was that the Hybrid Theory yeah. album that was their first one? Yeah, and my brother, my older brother, discovered that before. Like I've said this multiple times, my brother discovered more artists before everybody else because he was always on. Like this is right when Napster came out oh, yeah. and like file trading or like whatever the hell you call it. And my brother would just get all this music. And I remember the first time I listened to Lincoln Park uh, Hybrid Theory, I was like, "This is the future." Yeah, you were like listening to the music being like this doesn't sound like anything else this is the future <laughs> and then i saw them uh live and they were fantastic yeah they were fantastic because you're like are they mixing rap and rock together yep. in one band and it actually sounds good yeah okay. it was awesome man yeah i you know a lot of that a lot of that started happening in the late in the late 90s it was awesome dude it was awesome i miss those times <laughs> i miss them so much yeah I do too. It was such good times, man. There was something about that energy in the late '90s. There was a lot of like aggressive aggression, I guess yeah. you could say. But also, and on the flip side, you had like all that poppy shit too. Yeah. It was crazy. You had something for everybody. Yeah, you could watch the VMAs, which used to be a huge deal. Dude, the VMAs used to be so cool. Yeah, and now who gives a shit about? Because they don't them? make music videos anymore, so I don't know why they'd even still run them. Like. People don't make music videos anymore. God, you know what I used to watch when I was a kid, and I would just be like, I cannot wait till I'm old enough to do that. Remember uh, MTV Spring Breaks? <laughs> Holy crap, man! When they would go to like Panama City or yeah. like Fort Lauderdale or Daytona, and man, it just looked like it, it looked like the greatest time of all. It looked like the greatest time ever it used to confuse me so much when i would see the mtv spring break and then i would watch those nitros that were i think in the same place yeah and you're like this is so weird they're wrestling where they just had these big parties on mtv and this is how big wrestling was back then you know like during the monday night wars those wrestlers were on those yeah. mtv shows do you remember that 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 uh show where nash chased that kid down 
No. So like Hall, Nash, and like a few other WCW wrestlers were uh, on stage. I can't remember what show it was for, but some kid in the crowd like threw something and it hit Nash. Big no-no, first of all. Nash is the biggest human being I've ever seen in my life. And so Nash hops off the stage and goes running after the kid, slams him in the sand. You know, it doesn't really fuck him up or anything. just kind of slams him in the sand. And then you see security run over, cops, whatever, and they start, you know, they arrest the kid. But that's how big, like, wrestlers were frequent on MTV, like, you know, like the award shows, Mm -hmm. the spring breaks. That's how popular wrestling was back in the day. That's how popular it was crazy yeah. there's very few mainstream cross stars now that could do that no you have cena and you have the rock yeah is there anybody uh, like is there anybody else really crossing over and there was some netflix movie i watched like a week ago that roman reigns was in like the first scene of but that oh, really? was it. and I, it's some david spade movie okay and he was in it and i was like this is random and like you know roman was in that movie with the rock and jason statham the hobbs and shaw movie but other than that, no, there's not really anyone I would expect to just turn on the TV and see. No, it's crazy. I love the late 90s. Early 2000s, that was good stuff, man. Yeah. Those were good. Those were fun times for me back then. Different world. It's very Completely different, different, different world. Very man. different world. We're celebrating the fact that we're, we can go to the movie theaters again. Like that's, how, <laughs> that's the kind of crazy world we live in now where I'm like, oh, there's movies coming out. I might want to go to the theater and see. Like That's so weird. Uh, Yeah. I know, man. There's, there's gonna be a massive dump of movies this year, like so many. Like, there's a lot of trailers coming out. I saw the the yeah. trailer for the new Venom. Yes. What do you think about that? Uh, it was okay. I yeah. I like the choice of Woody Harrelson as Carnage, but well, first of all, Woody Harrelson is one of the greatest actors of all time. Very, very underrated. Name a genre, name a character, he nails it. Yeah. You want comedy? He fucking nails it. You want serious drama? He fucking nails it. What do you want? What do you want? Woody will give it to you. Yeah. The first season of True Detective, I don't know if you ever watched it. I never watched it, but I heard so nothing good. but good things. Him and McConaughey are so good together in that first season of that show. Dude, I'm a big Woody Harrelson fan. Big Earn McCracken from uh from Kingpin. Mm-hmm. One of the fun uh, one of the funniest characters of all time. And Woody Harrelson in that movie kills it. Yeah. Um there, there, he's been in, uh, you think about it, like that guy's resume. He's is done insane. Everything. Yeah, he was on a hit TV show in Cheers. Yeah. He's been in so many movies. Like, he's still around. He's still going. He's a man, dude. I love Woody Harrelson. But uh, I, I saw the trailer for Venom. And if anybody... Uh, so Woody Harrelson is playing uh, is playing Carnage mm-hmm. in this movie. It's Venom. Uh, I can't remember what the title is for Carnage. Something for Carnage. It's Let There Be Carnage. Let There Be Carnage. Something That's like that, it. yeah. And I, I don't know how I feel about this. So I wasn't too into the Venom comics when I was a kid. Yeah. And I thought Venom was just like a ravage, like a killer. Yeah. But they kind of have him as a comedic. Like even in the first Venom movie, there was a little bit of comedy with that, the Venom uh, character. Yeah. It looks like they're still riding that into this movie. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. I'd have to be. I'd have to talk to more serious comic book people to see, like, hey, is that true to the character? Yeah. Um, but I was a huge Carnage fan. Oh, me too. Back when I was a kid, because the well, first of all, the guy's name's Carnage. Yeah. He looks like Venom, but he's red. He always like morphs these blades and stuff like that, like these sharp objects out of his. Uh, what is it? Symbiote. 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 Whatever. Yeah. But anyways, uh, I'm sure I'll see it. Does it look awesome? No, I'm more stoked for the Batman movie. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, is there any other trailers that have come out? I saw like they they like Marvel released like little clips, not like full trailers, but little clips of like the Eternals. They have yeah. the Black Panther Black Panther two coming out. Yeah, they did one for the Black Widow movie, which is coming out in July. That looks sick. Yeah, looks that looks like a Jason Bourne movie. Yeah. I think it looks great. And they're supposed to come out like last year, right? Yeah, there it was supposed to come out in like December, but they've delayed it so many times. I don't. I have a feeling there's something in that movie that they didn't want to happen before the shows that were on came uh-huh. out. So maybe it has something to do with that. Okay. But I think that movie looks great though. Yeah. It looks really cool. Uh, and I think they're going to release it on Disney plus. Yeah. They're going to do it in theaters and on Disney plus, but it's going to be that you have to pay like 30 bucks to rent it. So probably cheaper. Just go to the theaters if it's in theaters. Yeah. But yeah. 
I mean, yeah, there's... Uh, the or you have the convenience of just sitting on your couch and yeah. pushing a button. I think the new Fast and the Furious movie is coming out this year. I'll pass on that the one. The new Saw movie is coming out in like three days. Eh, I'm not really into Saw movies. The first, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. The first first one and the second one were pretty pretty good. This but... one looks different because it's got Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson. It looks like it's more like the movie Seven. Oh, really? Which I, which I like. I love the movie Seven. That is a good movie. So like it, it, it's got that vibe in the trailer. So I'm kind of and it's like kind of not a reboot, but it's like they're kind of skipping everything that the old movies did. Where it's it was spinoff. Just, yeah, all the, the old movies were just all gore and no real substance towards the end. But like this one seems like it might have a story. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw the Quiet Place. Yeah, but that's Quiet good Place stuff. Two is coming out this in a couple of months. Like I'll be seeing that. That movie, the first movie was really really good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um. I, I enjoyed the my my wife really wanted to see it. I, I can't remember why she was so like stoked to see it, but um, Is she a big Emily Blunt fan. I don't know. I I like Emily Blunt. Yeah. Did you ever see uh, Fr- uh something tomorrow with Tom Cruise? No. Uh, I think yeah. I know I know what we were talking about. It's where she like he like keeps getting reincarnated. Yeah. As himself, like he lives the same day over and over. So it's kind of like Groundhog the Edge day, of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. And she's in it, and she's, she does a really good job. Yeah. It's a good story, too, man. I, I like that she movie. She was in Sicario. I don't know if you saw that. Yep, the first one. Yeah. I love that movie. She's been in a lot of movies I like. Yes. Cool, man. So, I'm looking, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward stuff to it. Stuff to look forward to, at least. I, I'm a big movie guy, man. I love going to the movie theaters. I don't know what exactly my future is going to be with the movie theaters. Uh, if a lot of the stuff gets released on HBO Max, I'll just watch it at home. Yeah. But I, I do love going to the movies, man. It's, it, it's one of those things I, I really do enjoy going to the theater getting your ticket going and sitting down and waiting for the lights to drop down and the movie to come on it's just and I, i'm a trailer guy too a lot yes. of people say they hate the trailers i love the trailers man i want to see what the fuck's coming out in the next few months yeah. or next year or whatever the only problem with trailers now is because twitter exists you see so many trailers like without going to theaters like it'll pop up on your feed yeah and all of a sudden it's like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Let's go to uh, questions. I think yeah. we got a few questions that are going to be uh, take a little bit of time. All right. So let me see who this person is. Okay. So Chad Rico on Instagram asks. What up, Chad? What are your thoughts on the legal legalization of marijuana in the United States of America? Also, do you feel athletes, employees of any company should be penalized, discriminated against for using marijuana? Vince shot a short clip with RVD this past week, which you should definitely check out. Vince shot a short clip with he he I guess there's some video with him and RVD that dropped or, Wait, or Vince uh, Vice Vice okay Vice, yes I'm sorry yeah Vice. Uh, actually Chad sent that my, to me Chad's a uh, a referee yeah he uh, he trains at well he he yeah he he trained refereeing at Level Up actually he was there this past uh, this past Thursday getting work in um, I'm all for legalizing marijuana uh, you're talking to a guy who has extensive experience in working in the nightclub bar industry and understanding the effects of alcohol on yeah. people. And Adam, go ahead and ask me, how many times have I had problems with somebody who was really high on, on, on marijuana? <clears throat> hey, Mike. Yes. Uh, how many times have you had issues with gentlemen who or women who have been smoking the marijuana? Interesting question. Interesting question, Adam. I've never had a problem. Oh, wow. Is that because people who smoke pot are calmer than people who get really drunk? I'm not an, I'm not a scientist, but my hypotenuse is that yes. I will tell you, I feel much calmer when I smoke pot. Yeah, man, it makes you feel so much better than what alcohol does. So, when I worked in the nightclub industry, man, I would deal with drunks constantly. Yeah, and you know, you have different types of drunks. You have happy drunks. You have you know angry drunks, and. You know, it's a roll of the dice. When you let people in, you're like, I don't know what kind of drunk you are. Hopefully, you're you're the happy kind. Yeah. But um, you know, alcohol, man, it, it just it, it's it, it tends to to make people think that they uh, they're a lot tougher. Yeah. Than they really are, and they they give them the uh, it gives you the uh, the balls to do something that maybe you wouldn't do normally. Yeah. So, yeah, man, I, I always, uh, I've, I've always said this, man, marijuana. I've never had a problem with anybody 
who, who, who smoke pot. I've never had to, I've never gotten threatened to get beat up by somebody who's high. I've never had, I've never gotten shit talked to by a person that was high, but I've had multiple incidences, multiple, multiple, I almost got killed <laughs> by a guy that was, you know, drinking, or, you know, yeah. intoxicated. And, uh, you know, I've always, I've gotten into plenty of altercations with people that are, uh, that are, uh, that have been drinking. So I believe that marijuana should be, should be legalized. Yeah. Uh, it was funny. Actually, I was talking to, uh, one of my neighbors, um, and we were talking about that, like, you know, legalizing marijuana and he goes, yeah, the only problem they're going to have federally with it is that all these alcohol business, like these businesses of alcohol, they, they got a lot of money right now. You, you introduce marijuana legally, you know, what's going to happen to alcohol prices or sales? I honestly don't think it would change. I mean, the I theory is the theory is that they would go down, right? That's I what guarantee everyone thinks. They'll change. Yeah. Guarantee they'll change. Because if you ask somebody who smokes pot and drinks alcohol, hey, what would you rather do? Smoke marijuana or drink alcohol? Guarantee they're always going to go with marijuana. Probably. Always going to go with marijuana. And um, so he was like, that's the problem, man. You got, you got, uh, you know, the, the alcohol business, you know, uh, companies with all, you know, the money, they've, they're definitely in politicians' pockets, right? Yeah. So that's the one problem with trying to to legalize it federally. Yeah. But that's you know what that's they're such they're such so stupid when it comes to that the federal thing. Like I have a friend who was going to the National Guard, and we had a bachelor party in Vegas, and he literally had to leave the room if any of us were smoking pot. Yeah. Because of the because it's legal in California. I think it's legal in Nevada, obviously, because you're doing a show for weed. But mm-hmm. like you you can't do that and like companies will fire you if you still test positive in california where it's legal yeah like if you like when i worked for amazon they were like yeah if you tested positive for pot we'd have to fire you and i'm like but it's legal yeah but not federally and Wild, it's just huh? like well so, it's so dumb now i got a question for you adam here's another question for you okay you're an employer right you have a business you have a lot of employees um you have employees that want to go out and and party, right? They want yep. to go have fun. Okay, they're allowed to go drink alcohol, and they might drink a lot of it. Yep. What's going to happen the next day? They're going to be hungover. Going to be hungover. Probably not going to be pretty. They're not. They're not going to be good employees. Nope. Probably feel like shit, and not give the best service, right? Whatever the business is, yep. they're probably not going to do the best at it because they're hungover. They feel like crap. I've never heard of somebody having a hangover from marijuana. No. I believe you have to, if, and if you do, like I said, I'm not a marijuana expert. I, yeah. So, um, you know, somebody might say, hey, man, I smoked way too much. You know, like I don't feel good today. But I feel like that's very far-fetched to say. Like, yeah. and, and, you, and, and to get to that level, you have to smoke inc- incredibly too and much alcohol. you sleep alcohol. better when you smoke. Exactly. So you should wake up refreshed. Like, you so, should wake up up. So let's say you have uh, government, right? You have uh, police officers and you have firefighters two very important jobs right mm-hmm. you got to be at the top of your game yep. hopefully every shift you're at the top of your game now i don't know if you know this i have a lot of firefighter friends but alcohol is frequently used i'm sure it is. in the fire in the fire yes. department business right because these guys got a lot of time off and obviously they uh they got to see a lot of things right a lot yeah, of they, car accidents they see a, lot of, a lot of bad stuff yeah and um now you have two very important positions, police officer and firefighter, that they're allowed to drink alcohol. Yeah. But they cannot smoke marijuana. Yeah. But now you're sending people out that possibly, oh, they have, well, they might be hung over from the night before. You know, they might not feel good. Okay, that doesn't sound good. No. Whereas, like, if they just smoked pot, they have no hangover. No. Nope. They have no hangover. But here's the argument. Well, they don't want people showing up high. Well, that's that's the thing. So I think someone should really try to figure out some sort of science where they can do what they do with alcohol. Can they test that you're high right now? Dude, there's because you can test for someone and see if they have pot, but that doesn't mean they're high at that moment. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. means that they've smoked it sometime in the last 24 hours. Yeah. Now with alcohol, it's like you blow into the breathalyzer, you know, right there if you're drunk. Yeah. I think someone should try to come up with something where you can immediately identify if somebody's high. Well, that's the interesting. I mean, it's usually just a visual test, right? Yeah. I've had plenty of, uh, I remember back when I worked at, in the nightclub industry, I had, you know, multiple times I'd have door guys show up drunk. Yeah. And be like, what are you doing, man? I can tell you're drunk. I can just see you're drunk right now. And I have to send them home. Yeah. And, you know, they they want people, oh, well, they don't want people showing up uh, high. Yeah. Well, motherfuckers show up drunk too. Yeah. You know, you you visually, you recognize it. Hey man, something's off about you right now. Yeah. 
Something's off about you. But like my roommate smokes so much pot, and I don't know the difference between when he's high and when he's not high. Really? So it's like there's certain people that are just that's the way they are, no matter how much they smoke or what. They're all there are very functional uh, potheads. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's like I couldn't be a functioning alcoholic. And like, well, yeah, some, some people can. Some people can. Some people but like, can. You still are impaired. I always slightly. find that amazing though when like people. Like that, that's how they spend their day is like high yeah. and they get through the day like work wise and all that kind of stuff. It's like, how, how do you do that, man? Like what, what would life be like for you if you weren't high? Would it be just like an utter nightmare? Like some people, admit, dude, okay. Real talk. <laughs> One of my friends back when I was younger, he was a soccer player. He was a goalie and, uh, he would, he was one of those functional stoners Yeah, and he was very, very good at being a goalie when he was high because it, it, it helps your focus. Yeah. In a way, like, and, you're just, like more attentive. And the coach would know this. He, the coach <laughs> knew this. And if he was having a bad game, he'd look at the other players and be like, hey, maybe at a, I don't know, what, what does soccer have? Like half times or anything like that? I have no idea. Maybe uh, you guys should go to the bathroom with, with uh, you know, the goalie. I'm not going to say his name because yeah. I don't want to out him. But um, yeah, like there's some, there's certain cats that can do that. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. But, uh, I don't know. I think it should be legal. Also, I think so too. let's talk about this. You know, he brought up like, you know, athletes and injuries. Wrestling, you get hurt all the time. A lot of athletes, any sport, you get you get hurt. Yep. You know, it's just, it's it's part of the job. I, I, I got hurt last week at training. Not from, not like injured, injured, but I took way too many bumps. I don't know what the fuck I'm thinking because I'm the trainer. So I'm like, okay, if I'm showing you guys, you better do it on me first because... I'm the responsible one here. I'm the yeah. one showing you how to do it. And if I believe that I'm showing it to you right, then you need to do it on me rather than like me showing you how to do it and maybe it not being the, the right way. And then you do it to somebody, another student, and you, and you end up fucking that person up, right? Yeah. So like that's what I feel like the trainer is like, hey, I'm showing you this. How to, I'm showing you how to do this. I'm showing you how to do it safely. Do it to me, you know? So, anyways, I took way too many fucking bumps. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. My lower back was killing me, man. Killing me. I, that was Thursday night. Friday, it, kill, it was hurting. Saturday, it was hurting. Sunday, a little bit better, but I had to drive up the championship and, uh, and do my match. Did the match. Of course, yesterday, it hurt. <laughs> this morning, it hurts, you know, because I re-aggravated it. So, you have a lot of these companies that are like, okay, cool, you're in pain. Well, you're not allowed to use marijuana. Nope. Uh, I don't think they can. There's a, actually, from what I heard, the WWE they have they're very strict. Even on like, uh, like over the counter Tylenol, like they're not they're they're really strict on this stuff. Yeah. But the thing is, man. So, a lot of these these uh, these uh, athletes, hey man, you can you're hurt, cool. You can go get a prescription, yeah. a doctor approved prescription for something that's an op uh, opiate, right? Mm -hmm. A painkiller that you can possibly get hooked on. Yeah. And this is for regular people, even with, like that have surgery, right? Hey, uh, we're going to write you this uh, prescription for painkiller, some kind of opiate. And what happens? Motherfuckers get addicted to, to pills. What's this, I, From what I've heard and what I've uh, heard people talk about, they'll re reject the painkillers now from the doctors. And in California, they'll go to like a dispensary yeah. pick up like edibles like a gummies or something like that and i think that's sounds like a lot better idea yeah than than possibly getting hooked on you know painkillers so yeah legalize this shit yeah. well that's something the nfl did last year they made it so people who pop for marijuana in the nfl don't get suspended anymore good like josh gordon like was suspended like a ton of times because he just kept smoking weed ricky williams ricky williams back like, in yeah, the day it's so dumb like who cares if they're smoking pot like don't what, what does it matter to you shit. and like these guys get suspended for stuff that's not illegal but because they didn't have a prescription or their prescription expired like they get suspended for it i'm like yeah it's like uh it's like steroids right yeah i 100 percent can understand why steroids are are uh illegal in in athletics yeah i also i, I kind of do love the sports when when the players are on the, the yes, steroids absolutely bring me back mcguire sosa bring it back to me 
Yeah. I'm telling you. Would, I, would people want to redo that if they knew both of them were on steroids? Like, if you went back to 98, if people, like, it was out there. These guys are on steroids. People would be like, shh, quiet. Loved it. It was awesome. It brought baseball back. It yeah. brought baseball back. Anyways, I'm not saying I encourage it, but I <laughs> I understand why they're out loud, loud, right? You got two, you got big men. Yeah. Uh, hitting each other hard on the fly and MMA boxing, obviously like, yeah. you know, these people are, are physically getting hit, you know, harder if somebody's yeah. on steroids. Uh, whereas baseball, it's like, Hey man, those, the, the contact sports I get yes. steroids help, but baseball, I'm like, it just helps you hit a ball further. Who cares? Like well, it doesn't give you a distinct advantage. Yeah. And, and by the way, the pitchers on the gas too. Oh yeah. Pitchers are on the gas. Yeah. So in the late nineties, again, back even to the late nineties, we had TRL, we had all yeah. this music and we had just guys just gas into the gills and hitting 60 home runs in a season. Dingers. Just dingers. dingers. Like, yeah. The, the, the pitchers on the gas, the guy at home plate hitting is on the gas. Even Steven Roger Clemens was on just as many steroids as Mark McGuire was in the late nineties, <laughs> <laughs> but I can get it. I get it. Why, why that stuff's, uh, Banned, yeah, from from those types of sports. And actually, I touched with now. I'm, I'm completely confused on where I was going with with the steroid I stuff. Know. I was going somewhere, and then you you you, you fucked it up, Adam. You yeah. fucked it up. Maybe I helped it. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah. You, talk, you were talking. You're comparing the competitive advantage. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. So 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 you take steroids, and, and it gives you an advantage. Yeah, it gives you a competitive advantage. Um, you recover quicker, you can lift harder and all that kind of stuff, right? You still got to put in the work. Yep. You still got to put in the work, but it helps you recover. I couldn't, I don't, I really don't see the physical athletic advantage of marijuana. It's just a better, it's like a more advanced way to focus. Like some guys will take Ritalin yeah. to help them focus in like a cheating way. Like yeah. right now you're more zoned in. Yeah. And I guess it's the same with pot, but to me it doesn't. But, but some people get more focused. Yeah. Some people get more focused. I don't think all people get more no. focused. Because so. when I did it, I don't get focused. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I can't. Um, but anyways, I uh, yeah, I have no problem with marijuana. I, I think it should be legalized completely. Um, I don't think employers should really care. But whatever, man. That's just what I think. Financially, it would help the country too. Hell yeah! And we'd make so much more money being able to tax that shit, dude. Everywhere. The amount of the amount of money the states that have legalized it are are getting, pff, insane, man, insane. Back up the Brinks trucks. <laughs> All right, yes, I, I'm completely okay with uh, with marijuana. It should be legalized. It's ridiculous that it's not. What else we got? All right, we got second question of three from this one's from DTF Abel. Which music do you prefer entering to? Big Balls or 99? Uh, uh, probably 99. Okay. Yeah. The Haunted. That's who that, that song's by. I don't know. Is that diff- the other song you go by? You come out to? I've only heard you come out to Big Balls. So. Yeah, I've come out. So my my original song that I came out to was Van Halen. Uh, was it really you, you Really Got Me Now? Something like that. I came out to Van Halen first then I think I came out to ACDC uh, shoot the thrill oh. and then should have worn an Iron Man suit to the ring I had Iron Man, I had Iron Man trucks oh, trunks. actually they're up in that closet right now <laughs> um, and then I had uh, I came out to Kanye West uh, the what is it uh, know something in the wild uh, what the fuck is it um what the fuck is it called? Is it from one of the no, earlier? Uh, no, Church in the Wild. Oh, okay. That's a cool... That, when I turned heel, that's the song that I came out to. It was a dope song. And then, yeah, I came out to The Haunted 99 and then came out to... Um, now, Devin and I use Big Balls. And then I've also come out to, like, Easy e um, Real Motherfucking G's. I thought that was cool. But yeah, I don't know. It's always weird when you're picking, like, an entrance song. Yeah. Because one day you're like, this song is sick. You listen to it like 30 times and you're like, this is going to be my new entrance song. And then like the next day you're like, you find another song and you're like, this would be sweet to yeah. come out to and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Entrance songs. They're fun. Yeah. Actually, we have four questions now. Sweet. So now here's the third. This is from SoCal Gabe. 
He says, moviegoers share their opinions about movies on social media, as do wrestling fans about wrestling. With wrestling, though, it's not uncommon to see fans say things like, if you don't like it, don't watch, or just enjoy it. Do you think that kind of mentality from fans is good or bad? Should fans try critiquing less and enjoying more? I have no problem with critiquing or, you know, uh, people giving their opinion on a match or wrestler yeah. or whatever. If they're, uh, here's the thing. If they're talking about you, it's good. Yeah. Good or bad. If they're saying your name, cool. That's all you gotta, you, you know, you really need. There's dog shit wrestlers yeah. that get shit on, but people don't know their name. Yeah. They know their name. I do think the fan critiquing of like, Booking shit, a booking and like how to do moves. I don't like that. Yeah, like, I try not to do that because I'm at this point I'm more of a fan than anything. Like I won't sit there and be like, "Oh, that move looked like shit," or the way they're moving in the ring looks like shit. Because like that's not like you don't watch a movie and go, "Man, his acting is terrible," hmm. or his you know. I mean, people do that too. Yeah, but like I don't I'm know, a big it, critique of movies. Huh? I'm a big yeah, critic of yeah, movies. Yeah, no, there's just like. I don't, I don't know I don't know how to equate it to movies but you know what I'm saying like there's a certain nuance of wrestling that like fans think they understand because they watch a couple of shoot interviews where they heard Terry Funk use an insider term yeah and they think that they know everything now. oh yeah 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 that kind of stuff I don't like like I don't mind people critiquing uh, there are a lot of wrestlers that should have thicker skin when it comes to their critiquing just ignore it like if you don't if you know you're doing it right just ignore it but like there's people that like are just saying I didn't like the match and then like the wrestler will come at them on Twitter like "fuck you," and I'm like, okay. "Yeah." Well, now that's a little, you're you're taking it a little too seriously. Yeah, my 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 thought process is if if you come into if you put yourself in the light the spotlight if you enter into this wrestling industry and you perform in front of crowds you're putting yourself out there to yeah. be critiqued or you know and people to give their opinion on you. Yeah, it's just it, 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 it this is it comes with the business man yeah and that goes for anything if you're an actor if you're any kind of athlete if you put yourself out there you're you know this is what happens yeah and guess what if these people are buying tickets if they are fans of the of the um entertainment yeah industry that you're in you know whether it be music uh tv uh movies wrestling hey man this is this is what it is. It is what it is. Um, I don't. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm fine with it, and I I, I understand it. Yeah. You're allowed to. I, I I do it with movies. I do it with TV shows. I do it with other stuff. Like, yeah, there shouldn't be anything wrong with critiquing something yeah. or saying I didn't like this specifically, but I, I I also don't like the people that says if you don't like it, don't watch it because there are certain products that are bad that should be better, where it's like. I'm going to complain about it. But like, and then again, like for me, like I got so tired of WWE. I, st I just stopped watching. It yeah. Now. And that's fine. It's fine. Like I, I gave them so much time to get better. And I was finally just like, this isn't, I'm getting no enjoyment out of watching three hours of raw anymore and all this other shit. So I just, I won't do it. Yeah. And this question actually reminded me of a, of a controversy that did come up this weekend that I forgot earlier. All right. And involved your boy Hammerstone. Oh, is this oh. the uh, podcast? thing? Yeah. And I agreed with him. Yeah. So he, he th did a thing where he said, um, if you're going to interview wrestlers, try to come up with a uni unique way of doing it instead of being like the seventh podcast to ask him, how'd you start? Who's your favorite opponent? Yada, yada, yada. And he was telling the stories about how people would like go to an MLW taping and ask him questions like, so do you have goals of like signing a contract as he was signed to a contract? Yeah. Do you have goals of winning a title as he was a champion in MLW? Like that. And that's one of the, and some people got like mad at him for saying that. And I'm like, no, that's true. You know how many wrestling podcasts are out there where they ask these wrestlers the same fucking yeah. questions? It's yeah. so monotonous and not every single Harry, Dick, and Larry out there should have a podcast talking about wrestling. Um, yeah, I saw that. And I, I you know what's funny is I, I didn't read all the comments below yeah. it. But um Yeah, apparently he you know, my boy Hammer. Yeah. He he's got a thing for uh he, he's really good at uh starting controversy. <laughs> I love. I it. guess he just he just shares an opinion that I would assume most people would have. Like yep. you'd be like, yeah, yeah. And then everyone's like, you're an, you're an asshole. I'm like, no, he's right. Like, uh, but also this is all like it doesn't matter if people took that as bad or good. Yeah, people are 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 paying attention to Hammer, and 
love them or hate them, you're paying attention to them. Yeah. And that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Okay. I, you know, I've done, I've done a few, you know, we have our own podcast and, uh, I've done other podcasts and yeah, like a lot of times it's, it's, it's redundant as far yeah. as questions wise, but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, I don't really have a problem with the same question being asked, but I mean, hammer's probably done more podcasts than me. So probably. it probably does get annoying. Yeah. Uh, when we have guests on, I try to make it a little bit more personalized. Yeah. Whereas like, I'm not talking to them as a fan. Yeah. I'm talking to them more of like as a friend or maybe a coworker or yeah. somebody that's in the business. You know, I'm not like, Hey man. So, uh, what made you get into wrestling? What, uh, what are your goals? You know, like that kind of stuff. It's like, Hey man, what's up dude? How you been? I guarantee all the interviews you've done with Dominic are very different than any other WWE interview he's done. I hope so. I, don't I know. mean, they, they, uh, Oh, so before we move on, there is one kind of critique I saw this weekend that is a good example of what I'm talking about. So Hammer wrestled Hunter this last weekend Yep. in Arizona, and he did his Nightmare and Pendulum move to him. And there was like three comments down. There was some guy that was like, man, these guys need to learn how to tuck their legs on that move. <laughs> and I laughed, and I was like, but he did. He took the move. He, Hunter's also almost seven feet tall. And people don't really understand how hard it is to take that move when yeah. you're that tall. Yeah. And the move, but the move went off without a hitch. Like it was fine. But that's the kind of critique I'm like, well, first of all, you don't have a profile pick. You're just a troll. That's the kind of critiquing I don't like. Like telling wrestlers, like, oh, you should do this better. Yeah. Like I'm like, save that for people who actually know what they're talking. Yeah, about. but you also look at that kind of stuff. And in, 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 yes, you're right. The person probably has no experience in wrestling, yeah. and it's their opinion. They yeah, pro- you look at their followers. They probably have like five followers. Yeah. who really gives a shit what yeah. they say? Uh, yeah, it's funny because I, I saw that clip, and that's that's one thing with Hammer's finisher, which is the pendulum, which yeah. is a devastating move. Uh, I've taken it multiple times. I have a funny story too. I can tell it to you guys real fast after I after I answer this question. But um, the uh, that's the problem. Ham- Hammer, I think, is maybe six. Six foot six one. Mm-hmm. I know I've, you know, he's a good friend of mine. You know, I think I'm pretty sure we're eye level. I'm six one, and yeah, Hunter six four. Yeah. So this is something Hammer actually kind of has like, like understood. Like when it, when he's giving the pendulum, sometimes that height difference can mess things up. Yeah. Um, I think Hunter wanted to take that move. I'm not sure. Probably. Uh. But yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's one of those things where. You know, like, Hammer has the strength to, to yeah. do that to anybody. He could give it to anyone, yeah. The problem is when the, the person's leg does swing down, is there going to be clearance yeah. for him to uh, to finish the move safely? So, um, you know, it's just one of those things where, hey, you got to pick and choose. Okay, Hunter, you got away with it. You're 6'4". If it's somebody who's 6'6", six, six, Eh, yeah, maybe we got to be a little bit more creative and, and think of it somehow. You know, well, it's like Baron around. Corbin's move. If Baron Corbin was six foot tall, it'd be harder to give those moves to some people. The end of days where he takes their legs and swings them under and then out. Yeah, like if he wasn't as tall as he was, I think that move would be harder to do to everybody. I think he could do it to a, a majority of people because of the difference in direction you're yeah. going. Whereas uh, the pendulum, you're taking a back bump out yeah. of it, and there's a lot more. There's a lot more G force in yeah. it rather than the pendulum where the pendulum you're kind of moving the guy's head over his legs yeah, yeah i don't know more it's, the guy, it's more it's more the guy taking the move than him giving the move kind of right? like, kind of yeah kind of it's, it's pretty much all on hunter to get under and tuck before he lands yeah so. it, it's just really hard man to really get those legs underneath as you're moving down yeah. it still look good i still thought, I, good. I thought it looked good when it's, I it's, saw it's, the video it's a true finisher oh yeah it's a true finisher man but a uh, funny story with Hammer. So I've wrestled Hammer multiple, multiple times. And the first time we ever uh, wrestled was up at WCWC. And I, and I and this is before, like, Hammer and I became pretty good friends the first time I went up to WCWC up in Oregon because we shared the same room. Okay. Uh, it was uh, – I, I had talked to Hammer in Arizona. I had talked to Hammer in Vegas – and I was like, all right, this guy's cool. And then, um, you know, when we shared the room together and then we kind of really, you know, we started hanging out a lot up in Oregon. And uh, that's when we really became like, you know, friendly mm-hmm. and, and really like cool with each other. And I knew Hammer's finisher was the pendulum. 
and I would just see that that move, and I'm like, "There's, I do not want to take that fucking move, man. I do not want to take it." So up at w- WCWC, we start wrestling a lot together, and I'm like, "Fuck me, I'm gonna have to like, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to take this 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 finisher, yeah. right?" So uh, we have a handful of matches, and I've had to lose to him, but I haven't had to take the pendulum. He's been giving me like the the front kick, you know, like that kind of stuff. And finishing on that, and I'm like, hell yeah! I've kind of like gotten out of this this finisher multiple times. So then we uh, we have a match, which is like a multi man match, and him and I are supposed to finish the match. And I think we're supposed to finish it with the uh, the front kick that Hammer does. If anybody, it's it's like a bro kick. Um, so we're 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 doing the match. It's a multi man match. Something happens. We go into the finish. And the ref comes over to us and is like, you still have three minutes left. <laughs> and we're like, fuck, God damn it. So him and I start just working. And, we, and we've wrestled each other so many times by that time that we just we know what each other are doing, basically, right? So then uh, I think he gives me another front kick and I kick out of it. And then <laughs> finally Hammer goes, you got to take the pendulum. And in my head, I yell out, fuck me. Because I <laughs> it literally on the fly, in the ring, you got to take the pendulum. Yeah. And he just hooks me up for the pendulum. There's no way I can politic my way out of this thing. There's no, there's no nothing. And, I, and next thing I know, I'm off my feet. And, uh, and then uh, I'm, I'm heading down, man. You know, I'm... I'm, I'm I can feel like, like I said, I can speak to this move because I've taken it multiple yeah. times. You know the G forces. It, 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 there's a lot to this move. It is safely done though. Yeah. Hammer, Hammer is strong enough and he's safe enough to, to complete it. So I take the move and you know it, it's it's pretty devastating, but it's like okay, it's a hard bump. Yeah. But it ain't gonna kill you. And I was like, all right, cool. Took it. I can. I, I live to say that I, I took it. You know. And then we have one more match. Guess what the finish is. The pendulum. The pendulum. Like, like from now on, Hammer cannot finish me with the front kick. It's got to be the pendulum. And I'm like, oh, fuck me. I think one time I wrestled Hammer, if not, it, it, you know, multiple times, like up at WC, I, I think I wrestled him like five times when one weekend. And if it wasn't like a singles match, it was like a multi man match yeah. where like him and I would eventually hook up because that was the storyline. And man, for a week, I swear to God, I felt like I fucking got hit by a goddamn truck. And not because Hammer's like stiff or anything. Hammer, when you lock up with Hammer, it's like it's like locking up with like a granite rock. Like he he is built like yeah. he's so solid. So when you take an uh, when you take a shoulder tackle from him, you're taking a shoulder tackle from him. And all he's got so many big man moves. And for some reason, I have this incredible ability to get really light for power bombs. And Hammer was like sweet. You know how to get. You know how to go up for power bombs, and he. I'm telling you, God damn it, Hammer! You got me on a goddamn rant now. He would slam my ass into the mat. I swear to God, I would. I would go up so so easily, and he would follow through on on the on the slam right. And then I see him giving all these 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 power bombs to these other kids. God damn it, Hammer! Why don't you lay a mattress and a pillow down for them? He takes it so light on them. And then he back rolls them into like a German or something like that. And it's just like, God damn it, Hammer. Why couldn't you do that for me? You literally, he, I, I'm pretty sure Hammer tried putting me through the mat a few times. But anyways, he's still one of my good friends. That's why, that's why he did it though. Because Ex- you always are harder on your friends than you are with people you don't know. At Julius uh, at Thursday night training this past week, we, we, made the, we, we said that. You always hit your friends harder than, <laughs> than the yeah. people that aren't your friends because... Hey, your friend. There's no explanation. You in the back? I go. Sorry, I hit you. Like you just know. You don't even you, say you, sorry. You know. You know. You know. I'm not trying to hurt you. Like <laughs> you don't even say that. You yeah. just accept it. But anyways, Hammer's my boy. And uh, okay, yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't understand why that was such a big deal about what he said about the podcast, but it triggered some people. Apparently, I didn't read the comments, but it triggered some people. Well, weird. Like, what's weird is most of the wrestling people who do podcasts, like Sean Ross, like they were like, yeah, I agree. Like whenever I interview people, I tried to ask them questions that other people wouldn't. Yeah. Ask. Find something else out. Yeah. Find something else out. What else was that original question that we, it was just about, do you, is it good or bad mentality that 
fans critiquing wrestling and stuff. fans critiquing a match not a big deal to me uh if you are paying customer or if you're sitting to watch a match on youtube if you're taking the time out of your day and you want to you know comment on it hey this is a good match hey this is a bad match hey it was okay hey uh so and so had a good performance blah 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 this performance by this person wasn't really good hey that's cool man i understand it yeah you're 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 a customer uh, but when they're like, oh, the booking was bad. Hey, come on. You don't know dick about booking. No, yeah. You don't know dick about anything else besides the actual. It, it, watch the wrestling that's put in front of you. Critique it. Um, but other than that, don't tell me how I should be selling yeah. if you've never had to sell before. The only person that has any uh, right to talk about the booking or any other aspect of wrestling um, behind the scenes kind of stuff is somebody who's been in the business. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's just what I think. If it's, if it's somebody, if it's like, if it's a, uh, if it's Jim Cornette, if it's uh Dutch Mantel, um, if it's, you know, Jeff Jarrett, Jerry Jarrett, if it's the King, all those guys that are like famous bookers and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And they have knowledge. Yeah. They can give, I'm fine with them critiquing, you know, the booking and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But if, if you don't have, if you don't have 30 years, of booking experience or like behind the scenes experience yeah. in wrestling. Believe me, you don't know what you're talking yeah. about. I mean, you can, you can say something doesn't make sense to you. Yeah. But like, that's different than critiquing how somebody books stuff. Yeah. Like you can be like I, that angle didn't make any sense or whatever, but I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like wrestling critiquing, critiquing has just become way too toxic. It's not. It's never helpful. It's always just somebody shitting on it and saying you fucking suck, rather than being like I didn't like that. But like, if I don't like something, I'll say I didn't like it. But I'm not going to be like, fuck that guy. I hated it because he did it wrong. Like, I don't know. Like, if somebody just says, oh yeah, that guy sucks, that's not even critiquing. That's just being like, yeah, you know. But if somebody is like, hey, I don't like the way, or you know, it's just that character. I just they don't really get it. You know, like. I don't know. And it's it's always the follow up too. Like people are Baron Corbin sucks. Why does he suck? He can't wrestle. He look, Actually, he can. I think he's, a, he's an awesome. No, I wrestler. think he's good too. It's just, it's the you know it's the mentality of people that are like, yeah, no, this guy sucks. But why does he suck? Listen, ask me. I'll tell you who can wrestle and who can't. Yeah. And you'd be surprised. A lot of these cats that think these certain wrestlers can wrestle. Yeah. No. I'll tell you know like I'll tell you who can wrestle by watching them. Yeah. You know you can tell by little mannerisms, can Randy little base. He he could little Orton needs a little bit of polishing, a little bit of polishing. No, Orton's a fantastic. Wrestler. You don't know how many wrestlers I see on Twitter say that Randy Orton sucks, and I go, "You're probably not very good then if you think Randy Orton sucks." You know what's interesting is there's just different types of wrestling. Yeah. Um. So championship wrestling from Hollywood or the United Network. Yeah. Right. They now have championship wrestling from Mrs. Uh, from Memphis, which is going to be different than the one in California. Two, can, they couldn't be more opposite. Yeah. Um, I've watched some of the Memphis stuff. I like it. It's just a different style of wrestling, though. It's very old school, right? Very old school. Yeah. It's the Memphis. It's, it's um, they're more they're more uh they're more focused on character. Yeah, they're more focused on like promos, storylines like that. Um, you know, like hit a move pose. Yep, hit a move pose. Like Hogan that kind of pose. You're not going to see these crazy transitions. No, uh, from move to move from spot to spot uh, that, you know, out in Memphis, you're going to see a lot more of just the character work, the selling. And you know what I do love about this uh, championship wrestling from Memphis is they have squash matches. I love it. If you want to get somebody over, get out there, get them out there, have them put the, you know, you know, put the hammer on their opponent and, 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 and finish somebody in three minutes. Yeah. That's how you get people over. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of 50/50 booking. I'm not a fan of 60/40 booking. You know, if you want to make somebody a big deal, put them out in front of the, the 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 TV in front of the crowd, and have them just win. There was a squash match at the West Coast show I was at this weekend. Good. And it went three minutes. It the guy was super over, and when it was all over, the crowd loved it. Yeah, because he just beat the shit out of someone. Yeah, but I think the problem with doing squash matches in indie shows is people are too prideful. That is true. And you know, you're not going to show up to a show just to get squashed. But that's I'm like, true. but if you're a new student and you want to get on a show, maybe that's a good way to at least get your first well, action in the ring, even if you're just getting your ass kicked. Also, here's the thing: you hit up somebody and say, "Hey, listen," because uh, wrestlers are always um, 
emailing promoters, yeah. DMing promoters, like, hey, here's who I am. I'd love to, you, you know, help you out. Or if there's ever a spot open, I'd love to, you know, work for you or some shit like that, right? Promoters, man, just hit up somebody and say, listen, here's the spot I have. It's a squash. If you want it, I'll, I'll, you can have it. But if you don't, you know, I just got to hit up some, I got to hit the next person. Yeah. If that person denies it, then I got to hit the next person. If that person denies it, hit, hit, you know, squash matches are really important to getting a, a person over. Yep. Uh, you know, you look at all, wrestling was built on, on getting baby face or heels over that you really want to push in a program. First, you're going to introduce them, introduce them. They're going to kick the shit out of their opponent. If it's a baby face, they're going to do it, you know, with, with, smiling. They're going to do it, uh, they're going to do it within the rules, right? And then if it's the heel, they're going to be ruthless. They're going to be aggressive and it's just going to be an ass kicking, right? So you, you got to present, that's how you present wrestlers to a crowd. Like, hey, look, this person is an awesome wrestler. He's a great person. You know, he, he, he goes by the rules. And then you have this villain over here who is just kicking the shit out of people, uh, you know, choking them, you know, maybe beating them down after the pin, all that kind of stuff. To me, that's very important in wrestling. Yep. And if you if you don't have, uh, like I said, man, it, it, it's harder to get somebody over with 50-50 booking or 60-40 booking than, uh, than just go out there and, hey, man, squash match. Yep. Sorry, but this if you don't want this this role, you know, the, nobody wants to get nobody wants a job. Nobody wants a job. No. But it is in that, it, it's it's it is necessary. Yeah. And I think promoters should just say, "Hey, I have this spot. If you want it, it's yours. If you don't, I got I got to I got to go to the next person." And the thing is, if you do this for me right now, you know, may, maybe if you stick with me and you, you wrestle and, and and you have no problem doing the jobs, and all that kind of stuff, maybe it might lead to something else. Yeah, they'll remember that you did that for them. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's what I feel about that. All right, so the last question we have is from Fal. What bit of trivia do you know that is also that is very interesting but also very useless? Oh, movie, movie history, uh, movie lines. Uh, I have so much useless information in I my head. I think most of us do. Dude, it's insane. Remember, like, um, I love the 80s. I love the 90s. Yep. Those TV shows. I watched all of them. Pop-up video. Pop-up video. Um, I have so much useless information about music, about, like, certain bands, groups, artists. I have all these stupid information about movies. Like, these, I, I can recite. You know, you know the movie Can't Hardly Wait? Yes. I could basically recite that whole movie for you, word for word. I don't, know, I don't know if it's word for word anymore, but... Back in the day, I could easily, from start to finish that whole movie, easily do it. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. I Jennifer love that Love movie. Hewitt. Dude, what a hottie. During the in 90s, the day. man, geez. She was so hot. Um, but yeah, movies, music, I, I, I know all that shit. It's, it's, I should have really focused on something else in my life. <laughs> I really do. Well, you think about it, you're like, so if I can retain all this useless knowledge, like sports and wrestling stuff. I wonder if I had put my like mind to something important, what it would have been. Yep, yep. You know, it only like really pays off when on Jeopardy the category comes up. Yeah, Star Wars. Like, yes. Fuck yeah, I'm running this category, especially like when it's just me and my wife playing. By the way, do you watch Jeopardy? Mm-mm. So my wife and I, we watch Jeopardy basically like five nights out of the week, yeah. or you know, like whatever. Like if we're having like if we're having dinner, hey, let's watch Jeopardy, and you know, you you play against each other. And obviously, it's not for points. It's just whoever gets more answers, right? Yeah. And I, I love it, man. It's a lot of fun. And then Trebek died. And now they have all these other people coming in, like, filling in as hosts. It's just not the same, man. It's not the same, dude. I need I need Alex back. Unfortunately, he ain't coming yeah. back. You didn't like Aaron Rodgers? No, Aaron Rodgers was terrible. Um, what's his name? Who was the guy uh, that won all those Jeopardies? Ken Jennings. He was terrible. Um, it's different. It just... For some reason, like the cadence and the personality that Alex Trebek had, yeah, it was perfect for that show. And it was crazy because you'd never look at him as like a super charismatic guy, but he just had a certain level of control over that show at a certain point where it just flowed better yeah. with him. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they just need to change up the show. It'd be like Wheel of Fortune without Pat Sajak. 
It's like, and Vanna White's still doing the damn yeah. thing. That's a show I used to like because I, I for some reason my brain, I can figure them out the puzzles. Yeah, where it's like, oh, I think I'd make some money if I ever played on this show. Yeah, but. no, um, yeah, when pa- yeah, pa- I, I, I don't want to even think about Wheel of Fortune without Pat yeah. Sajak and Vanna White. I don't want that in my life. It's crazy. I, it's even like Price is Right lucked out. I was going to say, Price, yeah. Drew, Drew Carey does well. Yeah. And uh, who, who thought that Bob Barker could be replaced? Yeah. But Drew Carey does a very good job on that show. Um, Yeah, man. I have a lot of unnecessary information in my head where I'm just like, God, this should really be filled up with something else, but whatever. I know about uh, NSYNC's backstory. My, mine are just random like wrestlers from back in like the mid-2000s. See him on like a how at least see him on like an indie show now. Like, was he ever in WWE? And I'm like, yeah, he was there in 2007. <laughs> like, for some reason, I just remember seeing them on like a random SmackDown. I remember storylines that were with like lower card guys, and I'm like, yeah, I remember when you worked with him? And they're like, I don't remember that. <laughs> just this useless, just wrestling knowledge I have that just goes n- nowhere. It's not helpful at all. Yeah, there's a lot of like, there's some cats with wrestling knowledge where I'm like, wow, you know way too much. Yeah, well, I'm one of those people, unfortunately. Dude, I got into wrestling. I thought I was a serious fan. Yeah. Right? Like, I thought I was, like, a real wrestling fan. Then I got into wrestling, and I was like, oh, I'm not a fan. I I was, like, a casual fan. I mean, god damn. Some of these, some of these wrestlers and people that are in the business, their knowledge, I'm like, how the fuck do you know that? Yeah. Like, how do you know who main evented this WrestleMania? Like, how do you know, like, this match happened on this WrestleMania? Like, that's that's nuts to me. I can't do that shit. Yeah, I, I can pretty much go, I think, back to, like, Mania 15. I could probably tell you most of the cards of all the shows. But, like, the earlier ones, like, when I was not even really born, I'm like, I don't really remember most of them. You know what's funny, too, is I, like, so during the Attitude Era, mm-hmm. I wasn't one of those uh, keyboard guys. I wasn't an online guy, so I wasn't going to the dirt sheets. I loved wrestling back then because I just accepted what was given to me on yeah. TV. I didn't do my, I didn't try to look behind the scenes, you know. But they were also giving you a good product, so there would be nothing to really look for anyway. Like, yeah, yeah, that too. But I didn't know Vince Russo was the writer back in the day. I didn't know who the fuck the writers were yeah. back in the day, and I didn't know until I got into wrestling. You didn't watch Beyond the Mat. Yeah, I watched Beyond the Mat. But they, I, they basically talk about it in that movie that he was the writer. But I didn't even yeah, I didn't he didn't, give a shit. It back didn't, then. didn't matter. Yeah. I, I gave a fuck about Stone Cold Steve Austin. I gave yeah. a fuck about The Rock. I gave a fuck about the the uh, Mankind. Mm-hmm. I gave a fuck about Jake Jake Roberts in that movie. I didn't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck who the other guys are, man. They're yeah. they're, they're not they're back they're behind the scenes people. I didn't I didn't know who the fuck they were. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I didn't I didn't even realize I didn't know who the fuck Vince Russo was until like I got into wrestling. Yeah. Because I was not a behind the scenes guy. I didn't. I didn't dig looking for like dirt sheets being like, Oh, what's going on backstage? You know, I, I was like, no, I, I like the product that's on the TV. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't need to see anything else. I only ever cared about that stuff. Cause I always kind of would have rather gotten involved in the creative aspect of stuff than the actual physical. Yeah. It's late. All right. I just looked at the time. I am so late. I have a yoga class at four o'clock and it is three thirty six. I got to go. Yeah. If you want the tip, you got to take the whole hog. Adios. You're gonna die, you're gonna rat doll! Rat doll!